right now. Two top chefs are going head to head in a Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs showdown. It's the battle at Brown Foreman, where Valari's Josh Moore is facing off against Harold Baker from Gary's On Spring. Both have won showdowns before, but only one will come out victorious this time. Who can make the best food using wine and spirits? We're about to find out. And two top bartenders will go at it in a competition of their own. They are showing down with bourbon and a whole lot more. I'm Kevin Harnett with Tim Laird, and it's time to get this Secrets of Bluegrass Chef showdown started. All right, I'm Tim Laird, and welcome to a very special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chef showdown. So it's going to be a great show and a great day to be here at Brown Foreman. With that, Kevin, you know, Tim, we've got a great crowd here today. It's beautiful weather outside. Of course, we're using beautiful products to help make some great dishes. Joshua Moore, Harold Baker, the two chefs that will go at it. Here's how the showdown will go down. Now, we have two dishes that each chef will make, one sweet, one savory. They will be judged based on the criteria of this. Ten points going to taste five for presentation, and five for creativity and originality using the brands here from Brown Foreman. So with that said, the judges will then tabulate today's winner. The showdown judges are as follows. From 102.3 The Max, George Lindsay. Brown Foreman's very own from the legal department, Mary Barrazzato, and the CEO from Business First and the chairperson for the Metro United Way campaign, Tom Monahan. Tim, it will be a tough job that the judges have as we get ready to start today's showdown. I think it's time that we get the chefs cooking. Chefs, are you ready? Ready. Both sides? Yes, sir. Ready. All right. Let's get cooking. All right. Josh Moore, the chef from Valari, is going straight to the bar, picking up some double-oaked Woodford Reserve, Tawaka Italian liqueur, and Corbel champagne. Well, I, I love Brown Foreman products. products. These are all for cooking right now. I might, say, I might okay. sample. I see you the, have some empty cups here. So the, yeah, I the, know the, the double oak, that's my favorite. That's part of the fun of cooking, right? You can yes, sample, sir. You yes, sip sir. a little bit along the way. So you've got a lot of uh, things over here. Tell us about uh, maybe uh, what you're going to be doing. Making a uh, Tawaka bread pudding. Oh, nice. And a Corbel Champagne Gelato to finish it. Ooh. Have uh, cream and milk. Warming that up with the vanilla bean. In this pot, I have cornstarch and sugar. Bread pudding, I have farm fresh eggs and sugar. That's uh, it's another thing about uh, Valari. You, you source uh, local ingredients. Actually, I do. not only does he source local ingredients, he sources it from his own farm. When do you, when do you yeah, how about gang? A full-time chef and also on the farm? Full-time full farm, for sure. I don't sure. know how you do that. I, actually, for our uh, savory dish today, I'm doing a cream Swiss chard. Okay. I just cut the Swiss chard down from the garden this morning. Uh, wow. Fresh, fresh. That, that's fresh. So, that uh, all right, I'm going to let you get cooking right, over sir. there. I'm going to see what's going on over here in this corner. Harold Baker, how are you, buddy? Tim Lee, Gary's pleasure. on spring. Pleasure, sir. I'll pleasure. tell you what, looks like you've got a lot of pans going on up here. A lot of pans going on here. I have a little bit of fusion. These are going to be, I'm going to use some liquid nitrogen today. Oh, I saw this canister over here. Look at this. That's liquid nitrogen. This is actually, this is liquid nitrogen, and this is actually the first time this chef has used it. I've always wanted to. I've, all, I, I've always wanted to play with it. Now's the time. So um, I um, notice how everybody in the tent is now leaving. <laughs> uh, the idea was to do Kentucky raindrops. Um, they're intense flavored reductions of different. This is actually you could say a blueberry. We have a, a mango. We have a lime. This is a mousse, and this strawberry one's a mousse. Then we have a uh, this one right here is a uh, raspberry. So um, I'm thinking now I've already, I knew in advance a little bit about some of these bottles here and I'm using Fire Eater. Oh. So this one here has Fire Eater infused into it. I also, by looking at the selection, I'm gonna use that Chamborg. We're gonna see how that's gonna freeze up. Interesting ingredients, a lot of uh, different foods. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna send it down to uh, Kevin Harnett to see what the judges are thinking right now. 
This is a voice you'll recognize and now a face, George Lindsay from 102.3 The Max. The voice is much more pleasant than the face, just let me say that. It's a radio after all. People have said that about me and I, I just moved forward anyway. Kevin, you know? have, this is so, I'm so excited. Josh does such great stuff and it's starting to come together. It looks really good. I'm scared to death of Harold. I am. <laughs> He's got you a, and me both, and you should see him with a knife in his hand. He's got a thing of liquid nitrogen back there, and I just want to back away a little bit. But <laughs> no, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to see what he does with this. So very excited. The savory, the sweet, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mary Barrazzato is here from the legal department at Brown Foreman. And uh, Mary, I understand you're a foodie as well. Just a bit. Just a bit. Tell me, uh, tell me what your favorite types of foods are. Well, given my last name, Italian's always number sure. one on the charts. And what do you think about the... Uh, presentation so far. I know we're just beginning. Oh, it's, all the dishes sound phenomenal. I'm looking forward to tasting them. Looking forward to that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tom Monahan is here as well, the uh, chairperson for the United Way campaign this year and also the uh, president over at uh, Business First. Nice to see you, Tom. Oh, well, glad to be here. This is quite exciting. I'm really looking forward to it because I'm so used to uh, strictly digesting my favorite brown form and products in liquid form. <laughs> it, it'll be nice to chew on some of them today. <laughs> Well said, let's get back up to the action. And Tim, they're right because as Tom pointed out, the chefs have to use the portfolio of Brown Foreman products behind you. That's right, Kevin, absolutely. Meanwhile, the cooking continues. Harold Baker from Gary's on Spring is busy working on a savory bison dish in which he plans to use Early Times Fire Eater, which is a cinnamon infused whiskey made right here in Kentucky. And he's brought out the liquid nitrogen to make a dessert called Kentucky Raindrops, in which he'll also use the Fire Eater and Chambord Raspberry Liqueur. We'll keep an eye on that. On the other side, Chef Josh Moore from Valari is working on his bread pudding made with Tawaka, an Italian vanilla liqueur, and edible art. He also has some Eridura Silver Tequila on the table. We'll see what he does with that. Plus, Double Oak Woodford Reserve, which he's planning to use with a hearty plate of ribeye. In fact, they're 14 ounces with the bone-in called Butter steaks. A lot more cooking and creativity is sure to come. The Secrets of Bluegrass Chef Showdown continues with the battle at Brown Foreman. Coming up next, the chefs will plate up their masterpieces, and two top bartenders will go at it in a competition of their own. Stay with us. The Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, the showdown, the battle at Brown Foreman continues when we come back. Welcome back to this special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett on the campus of Brown Foreman, the corporate headquarters here in Louisville. You're watching this special edition where we pitted two top chefs, Harold Baker from Gary's on Spring with Joshua Moore from Volare. They're going at it, creating masterpiece dishes using the very own spirits that they make here at Brown Foreman. What do you say we get back to the action? Who's there? None other than our very own Tim Lair. The cooking continues. Harold Baker's out at the grill cooking bison, and in here, Josh Moore, tell us what you got going on. All right, I have our cream Swiss chard with fresh pears, truffalo, parmesan, and a touch of cream. This has our uh, <coughs> Herradura silver for our Brown Foreman product. Very nice. And our sauce is going to go on our ribeye putter steaks. Jumbo shrimp, melted leeks. Now, these, these are jumbo shrimp. I mean, look at the size of these. Oh, my God. <laughs> These are like mini lobster tails. I, I've never seen shrimp this size. I used wood for double oak, double oak in this. Beautiful. That's, That's why the shrimp are happy. Yeah, they are. They, they are. are. <laughs> the wood for double oak. I'd, I'd be never happy been swimming happier. in double oak as well. <laughs> That's good. Good for the chef, good for the shrimp. And by the way, I always like to reveal this. I know you've been on the show many times. We love having you on there. But we can always prove that he's a four-star chef. And for those of you that don't know, here's the proof is in the pudding. So, or the arm, as I should say. There it is. Four-star chef, everyone. Tim, Harold Baker from Gary's on Spring doesn't have the four-star tattoo, but he's no slouch in this competition by any means. Right now, he's outside on the grill, working on his Kentucky raised bison. This bison here is, uh, I put a little Monterey seasoning on it. We're gonna grill it up mid-rare. 
We're gonna serve it with our piece of lobster fig, uh, fire eater, cinnamon, demi glace. And back inside, Chef Josh is working on a risotto to go with his steaks. Tim? Give us some secrets to uh, a good risotto, Chef. Um, good risotto, start with the best arborio, number one. Um, I always start off sweat onions, a little bit of butter. You want to just slightly toast the outside of your arborio. And then I start with white wine. I okay. do a three to one chicken stock to white wine ratio on my risotto. Three to one. And I always use a wooden spoon. It, it doesn't. It, it Who doesn't. Who would have known the wooden spoon's a secret to risotto? It doesn't I, tear up the rice kernels, and it helps bring the starch off the bottom of the pan. Very good. It doesn't give it that metallic taste. Correct. On the other side, Chef Harold from Gary's on Spring is working on some sides for his bison, collard greens, and succotash. So succotash goes in first. Succotash is going down. That's going to be our foundation, our center of our plate. And you're right. Very, very southern traditional. Food's happening with this. And here come the slow-cooked collard greens. All right, there it is. The greens are coming in. The greens are coming into effect. I love greens. Wow. Gosh, just a, come on gang, you gotta smell this now, don't you out there? Is this really? <laughs> Woo! Chef Josh from Valari is also plating up fast and furious, both his entree and his dessert. We have tuaka bread pudding with a white chocolate cage, a Chambord bittersweet chocolate sauce. Gonna finish it with uh, Corbel champagne gelato, fresh berries, and then the uh, blown sugar swan. Wow, and now we're gonna doing the entree. Interesting, are these uh, little, little pumpkins that you've yeah, uh, a little roasted Yeah, a little roasted pumpkin, so when you eat it, you can actually taste the pumpkin as well. Filling this with our cream Swiss chard that I Looks delicious. cut down from the garden this wow. morning. It has pancetta, cream, white truffle oil, parmesan, and of course the hiradura. And our risotto. This is a asparagus and dill puree in the risotto. That's a of beautiful green color Sonoma, too. Sonoma Couture. I'll tell you what, that's one way to get uh, the kids to eat the greens. Hide it in risotto. <laughs> That'll work every time. And then, right off the grill, those bone-in ribeye putter steaks. And finally our shrimp. Mm -hmm. Gonna top our risotto with a horseradish cream. A little bit of fresh horseradish on top. And some crispy beets. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Chef Josh Moore. Thank you. Valari Restaurant. Meanwhile, Chef Harold has put down his grilled bison strip steaks with that fig and peach demi-gloss. Man, isn't it looking good? And now check this out. Now he's going for the liquid nitrogen to finish up his dessert. Let's see what she does. Let's see how she acts. All right. That seems to be the trick. There's the trick, see? <laughs> We're just going to go Learn full. while you go. We're going to go full bore. This is that Chambord. Very good. Strawberry. This is a strawberry mousse. It looks like Harold's also adding peach puree into the liquid nitrogen. So this should not only be colorful, but flavorful. Raindrops from Kentucky. There they are, it is the raindrops. Look at that, wow! <laughs> now is uh, Harold Baker's uh, playing with nitrogen over here. Our other chef is over here playing with fire. Did you see this? <laughs> he's, he's got his blowtorch out going. Making little, these are actually blown sugar just like glass blowing. Wow. But with hot sugar. And then the leaves are pulled. Making some little little swans for the plate garnish, and they are edible. So, like I said, this is this is. I mean, working with sugar, it's so delicate. It, it it's, is. It's one of those it's things. It's stressful. That, even even down to the intricacy of uh, like a. Oh. oh. Step oh. two feet. Two feet. <laughs> Stay there. These are delicate, aren't they? <laughs> Harold, Yomi, come on, baby. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't see anything. Give me the cash. Give me the cash. <laughs>
All kidding aside, Chef Harold is ready to give Josh a run for the money. Coming up, the judges will dig in and chime in on today's showdown. They'll let us know how the chefs are doing, and they'll ultimately decide the winner of today's competition. Now stick around, because up next, a little later on, two top bartenders will go at a competition of their own. Tim Laird back with you for more Secrets of Bluegrass Chef Showdown. Two great chefs are cooking with a lot of heart and spirits. Now, the cooking's complete, so let's go to Kevin Harnett to take a closer look. Tim, the chefs have prepared two dishes each, one sweet and one savory. Harold Baker from Gary's on Spring has prepared a bison strip steak with slow-cooked collard greens and succotash. He's used Early Times Fire Eater in that dish, a cinnamon-infused whiskey. For dessert, he's made what he calls Kentucky Raindrops, a strawberry peach and raspberry flan in a spun sugar bird's nest, garnished with frozen chambord liqueur and a variety of fruit purees. His competition, Josh Moore from Volare, is serving bone-in ribeye with giant sautéed shrimp in double oak Woodford Reserve butter sauce. Add to that asparagus and dill risotto with horseradish cream, crispy beets, and a cream Swiss chard that came right out of Josh's garden this morning. For dessert, it's tuaka bread pudding wrapped in a white chocolate cage, which is filled with a champagne gelato. He's also decorated the plate with bittersweet chocolate and chambord sauce, as well as his edible blown sugar swans. What do you say we find out how those dishes turned out? Let's go down to Tim Laird, who's with the judges. All right, thanks, Kevin. I'm here with the judges table, and I'll tell you what, what a table this is. My goodness. Uh, starting out with George Lindsay from oh, Max 102.3. I'll tell you what, what a feast. This is so amazing, and uh, I tell you what, if we can talk real quick, uh, Gary's on Spring, uh, Harold Baker's bison was unbelievable. He did a masterful job in grilling it, perfectly grilled, pink in the middle. I, I thought it was outstanding. And then you go over to Josh and that putter steak <laughs> that chop thing. thing it, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Again, a great job grilling it. Well, thank you, George, for being part of our uh, judges panel. Uh, Mary, what were your thoughts? Everything was spectacular. Um, I have true confession though. I have never liked collard greens and I have never liked Swiss chard and both were phenomenal. And Tom, what were your thoughts on these dishes uh, as the chefs brought them out? Man, it, it's like dying and going to culinary heaven. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and the presentation is so wonderful. You don't even want to eat them. They're like art pieces. The tastes were just tremendous. A lot of, you know, the, the mixing, that's what I'm always impressed with with chefs is, I guess it's just trial and error, but to pick so many different things and to put them together and come up with these unique tastes uh, and the brown foreman products really made a difference. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, well, this is incredible. It's a big job. Soon we're going to be tabulating the entire scores and crowning our winner both uh, from the food standpoint and then coming up, our mixology. Thanks, Tim. Up next, the judgment and a cocktail showdown between two of Louisville's top bartenders. Stay with us. There's much more to come on this special showdown edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs from the campus of Brown Foreman. Hi everybody and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This is a special showdown edition here on the campus of Brown Foreman. We've seen sweet and savory dishes come from two of Louisville's top chefs, Harold Baker from Gary's on Spring and Joshua Moore from Valore. And now those dishes have been placed before the judges while they're tabulating their scores to ultimately decide who wins today's competition. Well, it's time for another competition. We like to call it the Battle of the Bartenders. What do you say we get that battle brewing with our very own Tim Laird? This is going to be an exciting showdown using Brown Foreman products. Over here, Colin from St. Charles Exchange. And over here, Paul the Colonel from DECA. So, Paul, uh, tell us about your cocktail you're going to make. So, it's going to be like a classic perfect Manhattan. We're also going to mix it up with a little uh, Fresno chili, so it's going to have that spice on it. We're going to be using a healthy two ounces of Woodford for each of these. And then I'm using a half ounce of the Sonoma Couture, 
Interesting for combination. each cocktail. Okay. So we're using one ounce total, and I've got one ounce of our sweet vermouth. We're going to use a little bit less than one ounce of that SoCo pepper, just because we've already got some other sweet flavor profiles working in there. And some heat in there. Coming well, up. here comes the heat. Here it comes. And uh, we already de-seeded these, so you don't need to worry about getting blown away. But you do want to, uh, you do want to make sure you get all the seeds, because if not, it's going to be a lot hotter cocktail for some. Good secret at home: take the membrane and seeds out of that uh, pepper. But well, we'll just give it a dense little toss so that it can play nicely with the other ingredients. And we're just going to use fresh ice because once again, I want to get those peppers out of there. Yeah. There it is, excellent, I'll tell you what. That's going to be amazing. But now it's Colin Churn's turn. He's the bar manager at St. Charles Exchange and he's hoping to go one better. Tell me about your cocktail, Colin. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do the, uh, the Old Forester, uh, the signature uh, bourbon as the base of it. Then I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, sweet vermouth as well. Slightly okay. bittered one, a touch of an elderflower liqueur, kind of some nice floral notes. Sure. Um, Cause you already got kind of a, quite a bit of ballast as I would say, a lot of low notes with the, uh, the bourbon and the vermouth. And then um, I'm gonna do some potable bitters. So it's, uh, it's an Amaro, it's in a bitter liqueur from uh, uh, Southern Italy. And uh, a little bit of orange cream citrate bitters. Okay. Which are gonna be not only citrusy flavors and vanilla, which is obviously gonna go well with the Old Forester, but also a little bit of citrate so it's a little bit more uh, round in the mouthfeel. After carefully measuring and adding the vermouth with his variety of exotic bitters, a little ice, and a stir, this cocktail is ready for the judges. There it is, fantastic job, Colin. St. Charles Exchange. Well, Tim, those are some pretty good looking cocktails. As a matter of fact, I think one of those would quench my thirst. But let's see what the judges think. The Divine Lorraine from St. Charles Exchange is a lot like St. Charles Exchange if you've ever been there. It's uh, very refined and yet it has so much substance to it. Uh, this may be my favorite new cocktail, I gotta tell you. Decca's version of the Manhattan was very unique. Uh, I was surprised to see him put the Chardonnay, the Sonoma Couture Chardonnay in it, but it really smoothed it out. It was very smooth going down but has a little heat there in the end, kind of warms your, your innards. It would be, uh, if you were a football gamer and had a flask of this, uh, you'd be in great shape. All right, the results are in. And I tell you what, it came down to one point on our Mixology Showdown. And the winner is Colin from St. Charles Exchange. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Colin. Thank you, Paul. And now, the results of our cooking competition between two previous champions came head to head today, and the winner is Josh Moore. Congratulations. Harold always. Still a champion chef, Harold Baker, Gary's on spring, Josh Moore from Valari. Two champions came together today, and that'll do it for our special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chef Showdown right here at Brown Foreman, and we'll see you next time.